The inside centre, also known as the second 5-8, is an integral link between the primary playmakers of the team and the rest of the backline. There are multiple archetypes of players that can take up the 12 position, whether they be an additional playmaker or a bruising ball carrier, and in this video we will cover all types as we take a look at the 10 best inside centres ever. At number 10 we have Brian Lima. Lima played international rugby for Samoa, scoring 29 tries in 65 caps, with 10 of those tries coming from the 18 games he played at World Cups, which is a very impressive return for an inside centre. Lima played in 5 World Cups between 1991 and 2007, making him the first player to achieve such a feat. Lima played club rugby in New Zealand from 1996 to 99 before moving to Europe where he would play as rugby for the remainder of his career, moving between multiple teams before retiring at Bristol. Lima had the build you'd expect from a Samoan rugby player and was infamous for landing big hits on his opponents. Sonny Bill Williams was a dual code star who started his career in rugby league before he switched to rugby union in 2008. Williams played for the All Blacks between 2010 and 2019, making 58 appearances in which he scored 16 tries. Williams played in three World Cups, winning the tournament in 2011 and 2015 and finishing in third place in 2019. He often came off the bench for the All Blacks due to the talent they had in the position at the time but he still had a massive impact as he was a great ball carrier who could fend and break through tacklers and also deliver offloads to extend attacking plays and give a clear path to the try line for a teammate. Williams started his union career with Toulon in France before moving to the Crusaders, the Chiefs and finally the Blues. He won the Super Rugby tournament with the Chiefs in 2012. Will Greenwood played for England from 1997 to 2004, scoring 31 tries in just 55 tests and he was a key figure in the World Cup winning team of 2003. Greenwood was also picked for three lines tours from 97 to 2005, making two test appearances in the 2005 series against New Zealand. He was a tall player at 6'4 and could play either centre position, but was known for wearing the 13 jersey even while playing the position of inside centre. Greenwood played club rugby for both Harlequins and Leicester, winning two Premiership titles with Leicester in 99 and 2000. Jeremy Guscott is the second England player to make it onto this list and the tail end of his career coincided with the beginning of Greenwood's career. Guscott also reached the 30 try mark for England in 65 games while making 8 test appearances for the Lions across 3 tours as well. He played on tours from 89 to 97, beating Australia and South Africa but losing to New Zealand. Guscott also played in 3 World Cups from 1991 to 99, retiring from international rugby in 99. He was an extremely fast and skillful player who played with plenty of flair and could beat multiple opponents with sidesteps on his way to the try line. Mac Gitto is the first player on this list who played as both a fly half and inside centre, and for his performances at inside centre he definitely deserves a place on this list. Gitto made 103 appearances for Australia between 2002 and 2016, scoring 698 points. He played in two World Cups in 2003 and 2015, losing in the final in both. Gato played club rugby for the Brumbies and Western Force before moving to Toulon in 2011, who he played with until 2017. At Toulon, he won three consecutive European Cups in 2013, 2014 and 2015, as well as a top 14 title in 2014. Gato ran great support lines, meaning he scored a large amount of tries from being in the perfect place to receive a pass from a teammate. He was one of the best game generals you could ask for at the centre position, and he was an excellent passer with a great all-round kicking game. Jamie Roberts played for Wales from 2008 to 2017, making 94 appearances, and also played on the Lions tours in 2009 and 2013, scoring one try from three test matches. Roberts was an exceptionally big centre, standing at 605 and 115 kg, and was often deployed as a battering ram who wore down opposition defences as it could take multiple tacklers to bring him to ground. He had a powerful fend-off and also had impressive speed when he made a line break. Roberts was also great on the defensive side of the ball as he could put monster hits on his opponents to help his team get the upper hand in the collision battle. He won the Six Nations with Wales three times including Grand Slams in 2008 and 2012. John de Villiers played for South Africa from 2002 to 2017, scoring 27 tries in 119 appearances and he also captained the team 37 times. De Villiers won the Tri-Nations in 2004 and 2009 and he was part of the World Cup winning squad of 2007, although he didn't play past the pool stage due to injury. De Villiers played the majority of his club career with the Stormers, making 105 appearances, and he also had brief stints at Munster and Leicester Tigers. De Villiers was an intelligent player who read the game well, which often led to him poaching intercept tries. He was a strong player who put his body on the line, committing to big tackles, and he also demonstrated flashes of speed and made the occasional appearance on the wing in his early career. Man Nonu played for New Zealand from 2003 to 2015, 
nailing his place as the starting centre during that time, despite competition from a lot of other talented players. Nono played 103 times for the All Blacks, scoring 31 tries and winning 8 rugby championships, as well as 2 World Cups, scoring a try in the 2015 final. Nono is one of the few centres who rarely switch from the number 12 jersey, and he played as a bulldozing ball carrier who was usually the first receiving option when his team wanted to draw in tacklers to the ball, in the hopes of opening up space for the next phase. He was a ferocious tackler, who has laid big hits on some of the most renowned players in the game, and has rarely come off second best. Nanu had a shifty step in tight spaces, which combined with his powerful fend-off made him one of the hardest players to bring to the ground. Nanu spent most of his club career in New Zealand with the Hurricanes before moving to Toulon in 2015 where he played for several years. He moved to the MLR in America in 2020 where he's currently still playing at age 40. Tim Horan played for Australia from 1989 to 2000, scoring 28 tries in 80 tests in what was regarded as the most successful era for Wallabies rugby. During this time, Australia won two World Cups in 1991 and 1999, with Horan playing an instrumental part in both wins as he scored four tries in the 91 World Cup and won the award for the player of the tournament in 99. Horan was just 19 when he made his Wallabies debut and he impressed in his second international game by scoring two tries against a strong French team, which was a sign of more to come. Horan had exceptional speed and he could run direct to make a line break, but also beat his opponents with his footwork. He was a good kick chaser and he was able to win aerial battles under a high ball and he had an all round solid game and often put his teammates through for tries. Horn was inducted into the World Rugby Hall of Fame in 2015. Who do you think missed out and deserved a place on this list? Please leave your thoughts in the comments.